Hey, it's Jeremy here. I'm going to be showing you how to manipulate and create swatches in Illustrator CC. You can see here, I've got my swatches panel up. To open that up, go to Window, then go down to Swatches, and click that, and you'll get this box pop up. So you can see that you'll get your custom swatches or default swatches when you first load up. So you've got colors, and you've got black and white, and you see we've got our fill, and we've got our stroke. So we can press X to shift that, or if you press Shift X, it's going to switch those over. And to get rid of um, both of them, what you can press is forward slash, and that's going to turn those off. So now you can see they're both empty, and we've just got our two um, empty swatches. So we can play around with colors. We can pick colors. As you can see, we've got different swatches. We can actually delete swatches as well. You can just select the ones you want, hold shift, and press the bin down the bottom on the right hand. Press enter, and you can delete swatches. You can also delete it from the drop-down menu on the right hand corner, click that, and you can go select all unused, click that and click the bin, press OK, and it'll delete everything that you're not using. It's good to do that when you're trying to clean up your Illustrator document, um, it's getting too messy and you just want your colors that you're using on that specific artwork. So what we can do now is we can actually add artwork, um, add swatches. So if I press this button down here, you can go new swatch, click that, and we can actually select different color types. So what we've got is process color and a spot color. What a process color is, is just processing all um, the elements or the parameters of the RGB or CMYK. Um, and it's just using the profiles from the computer. And a spot color pretty much makes a, a color that has a specific um, you know, parameter or specific um, unit that you can use um, as a <coughs> that you can use as a specific color for certain work, or when you drop it in another artwork, it will save it and you can recognize it as a spot color. So you can click on color mode and you'll get some options. You've got grayscale, RGB, you've got HSB, which is hue and saturation, and that's brightness. And CMYK, CN, um, CN, magenta, yellow, and black. And then you've got these lab and web safe RGB. I don't use those. I usually just stick with CMYK, RGB, because um, those are the most common when you go in for print. You can also click add to my library and you can add this certain color to your um, CC libraries and then you can use it in any other program, you know, Photoshop, InDesign, all that stuff, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to untick that, just press OK. So now you can see we've just made a, a spot color and you can see a spot color comes up with a dot. If it wasn't a spot color, if you go to, um, to a process, go back, press OK, and you can see the spot's not there. So now we know it's not a spot color, it's just a normal, you know, swatch. Another cool trick to add colors as well, just pressing the eyedropper tool. And I like to grab colors from images. So if I go around and click on the color, you can see it starts grabbing the colors. And then I can click add and just press OK and start, you know, creating color palettes this way, which is pretty sweet. Just like that. And maybe you want to save these colors in a folder, as you can see here. We can click a folder on the bottom left, new color group. We can call it... Um, Cool, cool gray. We'll just call it that. And then what you can do, you can see how it's now made a group. We can also just select these swatches as well and just drag it into that folder. Now you can see we've got our folder there and we can go ahead and use these colors as we want, just like that. Pretty simple. You've got some other options here as well. You can click swatch op options by clicking that button there. You can also show certain patterns or swatches you, you only want to see. So. It's currently on show all of swatches. So if you just click this drop down menu, you can just show color swatches, or if you just have gradients or patterns or color groups, then it'll just show that, which is pretty sweet. If you if it's very messy, you can just use that. You can also, as again, add it to your color group, to your libraries, but I don't wanna do that. So you can click that. You can also open color themes panel, which is a new feature as well in the CC. And you can see I've got color themes. These are some themes I've saved from um, the Adobe Cooler or Color um, online, and it will save those there, which is pretty sweet. And it'll save it so you can use it in all the programs wherever you are located. Another cool sweet trick as well is if you click this bottom on, on the left, you can see you'll get all these color options. So all color books. So we can go in here and we can select different swatch panels, swatch stuff. So if I go in here, click beverages, you'll get all these colors, which is pretty sweet. And you got all these cool stuff. Even they got patterns as well. You can create your own stuff, so you don't always have to come to Adobe. And you can see we've got some animal skins now, which is pretty sweet. So as again, you can come here and just go if you want. Just want to see the patterns, can do that. But I'm just gonna leave it back to normal. 
You can also go and find your Pantone colors. So when you're working in an agency or when you're doing like a big print client or, you know, for someone who's using Pantone colors, you go to color books and you get all your color books here. Usually we usually use Pantone uncoded or solid coded um, for when I'm working with, you know, big clients for studios. And you can see you get all your Pantone colors here. Um, and you can see how it's got a dot as well. And if you double, if you click on it, you'll see it says Pantone 105C. And it's when you double click it, it saves it as a book color. So it's especially a Pantone and you can't really change it. You can change the CMYK it's gonna, or RGB. And what it does, it's gonna transfer to the nearest color. So if you wanna get the nearest color, but you're not using Pantone, you can do it like this way and it's gonna change it. So you get the most nearest color to the CMYK to the Pantone and then it will create that color. And then we can just add it like that. So it's pretty sweet. So with the swatches, you get a lot of you know options and panels. You can always go in here, double click, change the color as you want, which is pretty sweet. Another cool thing as well is we can make global colors. So if I just grab a uh, random color from here, just grab a brown, click this, and you'll see this option here is global. So when you click that, you can see how it comes with the tab now. And global colors are very useful because if you want, if you have multiple objects, say we have multiple objects with all the same color, we don't want to go in and change every single color. So what we can do is double click on the global color and we can edit it. And if you click preview, it's going to edit every object with that same color. So it's really useful. So make sure you always try and use global colors when you're doing illustrations or logos or have, you know, complex artwork, then it's really going to help you out. So that, those are the main features of, you know, adding and manipulating swatches. You can also change the list view or show view like this. You can see it'll tell you the names or you can just use it for normal grid view. You've also got other options as well. You can duplicate swatches, delete swatches. All you have to do is just click this drop down menu. You can add swatches from here. You can add used colors as well. So maybe we have an artwork with specific colors. Um, and if you select those and click add use selected colors, it's going to add it to the swatches panel, which is pretty handy. So if you don't know what colors you're using, you select the objects and you can just transfer those into the swatch panel. You also can change the view as well. We can go to a large thumbnail or back to small, which I prefer. Um, and you can sort by name and kind and that type of stuff as well, which is pretty cool. As again, you've got swatch options and spot color options. So you don't need to worry about that. And swatch options, which we just showed you before. And you can also go and open swatch libraries as well. So as we clicked here, it has the same option as going to open swatch library. And then sometimes I can go other library and I have some color palettes saved. So I can come in here and jump in and I can just load up or custom libraries that I want. So now I've got all these colors. And then if you click on these folders as well, it's going to add it to your swatch panel, which is really handy. So it's really sweet and that's awesome. And you can also save swatch libraries. So maybe I want to save this specific panel with all these color groups. Maybe I just want to clean it out. And then I want to just save this. I can go here, go save library as ASC and it will save it, save it wherever you want. If you save it in this folder here, it's going to always be there on the side like here, but you can also save it swatch as a AI as well. And that can load it in as well. So pretty much that's how you use swatches guys. You have color guide and color as well, which I might go through in another video but it's pretty much the same thing. You can edit your colors from here. I'm just gonna drag this out so you guys can see. So you can actually edit your colors from here. As you can see, changes. And if you click the drop down menu, go to CMYK and you can pull this out and you can have more flexibility and more, you know, uh, uh, you can have more fun playing around with it, which is pretty sweet. So that's all good. And then you got a color guide here. So if I click this drop down menu, you'll get all these rules, complementary, um, monochromatic, triad, tetrad, high contrast. And this really helps me out when I'm trying to find out, you know, color palettes. Maybe I want a more reddish, um, you know, dark, maybe a high contrast one, or maybe I'm looking for an, um, a co right complement. And then you can just click these and it's going to add it into your swatches. So if you're playing with the color guide, you can click this button in the bottom right and that's going to add it to your swatches. So that's how you use swatches. Let me know in the comments below if this was a good tutorial and if you learned something out of it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content every week.